All right, welcome back to another episode of the Noop Sports Show. I'm your host, Ryan Noople, here with you each and every time. Thank you so much for giving us just a few minutes out of your day to uh, tune in, talk a little bit about sports betting, hear what we have to say. We have another awesome guest with us today, somebody I've been friends in the industry with for quite some time. Jeremy Inkey, consultant with Empire Marketing, is with us today. Jeremy, thanks for joining me. Hey, absolutely. I'm happy to be here. Jeremy, we go a long way back. It's crazy to think about how far we go back in this gaming space. Tell us a little bit about your uh, your past. I mean, I, I know we'll talk a little bit about what you're doing now, but I'd like to hear a little bit about where you came from, how you grew up in this space. Yeah, sure. So this is, gosh, I'm going to date myself and we're going to really make ourselves feel really old. <laughs> um, so it was like 2003, I was playing on party poker just casual playing online poker. And I saw that they had an affiliate program. And at the time I, you know, I graduated college with a marketing degree. So I was like, I'm going to get into online marketing. So I started promoting party poker. And I mean, just the most unscrupulous ways. I mean, like spamming Craigslist, uh, going to like full tilt and, uh, well, this is actually before full tilt, but like other poker sites and just doing things the total wrong way. But that being said, like it actually worked, like all these crazy things worked back in those days. So fast forward, um, you know, I was looking to meet other poker affiliates basically. And there really wasn't any, there was no communities or forums. I mean, this is back before MySpace for crying out loud. Right. Um, so I wrote this book called Party Riches and uh, basically just explained what being a poker affiliate was, how it worked and sold it on eBay. And after I had about, I don't know, I want to say 30, 40 people bought the book, I started my own forum. And from there, it just, it, it grew. And affiliate marketing itself really started to blow up because people were realizing like, hey, I can work from home. And the poker boom was literally just getting started. So mm -hmm. launched the community, um, ended up partnering with Poker News. And we rebranded into Poker Affiliate World. And then... Um, well, we, then we turned Poker Affiliate World actually into an affiliate network. And from there, um, let that network run on its own. I launched Poker Affiliate Listings. And I mean, we had, God, I mean, you were one of the original <laughs> members in that community yeah. too. And uh, yeah, that was, that, was, that was a fun time, man. It was, it was. And what's funny is uh, you probably don't even know this, but I actually give credit to you and Poker Affiliate Listings for my start in this industry, really. I mean, back then, you know, I... I I was the same. I was like, Oh, I'm going to get into this affiliate space, but I didn't really, I wasn't really sure what my path was going to be until poker affiliate listings comes about. And there's this little thing there about like a marketplace and like people asking for content and needing some articles. And I'm like, well, I can write articles. Yeah, sure. So I start turning out some articles and, and sure enough, you know, that led to where I'm at today in my business. And I'm still working with many of the same people from poker affiliate listings. In fact, we, we, we talk about you several times and, and how that, that forum single-handedly kind of launched this whole thing in a subtle way, which is kind of weird to think about now. That, that is crazy. And you know, it's, it's kind of humbling too, because I like you and me both, we're still buddies with a lot of the original people. And it's funny seeing people that I remember when they first started on the forums, had no clue about internet marketing. And now these guys are like legit millionaires. Like, uh, like Justin, for example, if you remember uh -huh. him, like uh -huh. the guy's crushing it. I mean, not even <laughs> in gambling anymore, but I'm just yeah. like, holy cow. Well, I mean, there's a lot to be said about the affiliate marketing space and learning it and perfecting it and mastering it. And, uh, you know, you, it's not an easy space to master, right? But it's uh, certainly can be a lucrative one, especially if you know what you're doing. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's awesome. So fast forward to today. So now what are you up to? Now, now I know that uh, you kind of got out of the affiliate space, now kind of back in. Tell us a little bit about today. Yeah, yeah. So basically, I mean, I, I think you would agree and most people would, we've all been waiting for this US market to regulate. And it's like, you kind of pinch ourselves and say, I can't believe this is actually happening. And like, I'm in Illinois, so this is awesome. Like all these new brands coming online. Mm -hmm. um, so now I'm really just doing consulting and helping some of these um, new casinos coming on board, kind of understand the, the digital space and understand the online space because mm -hmm. It's amazing that a lot of these land-based casinos, they just don't, they don't understand necessarily how marketing works in the digital space. And really, in addition to that, too, it's not even just the casinos. It's really the big brands like, you know, CBS Sports. I mean, they don't understand necessarily how do you convert gamblers? What, you know, what are the best methods to market to these people? So I've been working with a lot of 
um, a lot of these regulated uh, U.S. market. Uh, cool. Prior to um, doing the consulting I'm doing now, I actually was in New Jersey with Pallet Casino and mm. helped them launch their brand into the New Jersey market. So that was really interesting. Uh, nice. I will, I will say one of the big differences with this regulated market versus the old days is like, it's just so much different because it used to be like the wild west. If you can mm -hmm. remember, like I alluded to at the beginning of our interview, like yes. spamming Craigslist and all this yeah, yeah. Not like that anymore. Like no. <laughs> even just to be an affiliate, like you have to basically get, you know, you, you have to fill out all this paperwork and get approved and everything else. But uh, it's, I'll tell you, I feel like the excitement is about the same right now with these regulated markets opening up as it was back when you and I were just getting started in, you know, oh three, oh four. Yeah. And what's fun, what I always say, you know, what's fun about it now is that, you know, even though, you know, especially me, what I was doing back then, right, we we're providing services to people in the gambling space. I didn't really want to talk about it too much. I was very, right. you know, and I don't know why that was just because it was, it wasn't necessarily illegal what I was doing, but gambling in the U S wasn't really legal. So kind of in a roundabout way, I felt like what I was doing was kind of shady or legal illegal. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, all I want to do is talk about what I do and what I'm involved in. And because it's now becoming like uh, accepted in the U S and that just makes it so much fun. And now you're starting to see lots of people talking about it and lots of um, news every day from different States and different publications. And just, it seems like every day there's a new project or a new site out there in this space. And so I just love that excitement uh, forming around this industry. It's, it's a long, it's long overdue, right. For that oh. to really be talking about here in the United States. A hundred percent. And you know, what's, what's, it, it's crazy. Never in a million years would I think I would turn on the radio or the TV and hear like sportscasters talking about odds. Mm, I mean, I, I know. I imagine, like if they would have done that back in 2005, six, they would have been fired, you yeah. know? Yeah. And now it's like, it, like you said, it is super exciting because back in the day at like, you know, Christmas dinners, you, you won't even want to tell your family the member like, Oh, what do you do for a living? Oh, just marketing. Online marketing is all you would say. So now it's like, <laughs> Talk about sports betting, talk about, you know, yeah. for us here in Illinois, DraftKings just came into the market, yep. Rivers, all these places. It's, it's super cool. It is. It is. So for all of you guys listening, you know, I really respect Jeremy and, and everything he's done in the industry, but there's one thing I definitely do not respect about him. And that's that dang cub jacket you're wearing. <laughs> Come on, man. You know, I'm a Cardinal fan coming on my show wearing a cub <laughs> Cub logo. Uh, I guess I'll forgive you. I guess I'll forgive you. On that. I, I thought about that this morning, actually, when I was getting dressed. I'm like, oh, I'm going. I'm going out <laughs> riding today. I am for sure putting my my uh, Cub shirt on. I and love I've it. I've got the scoreboard in my office behind. I, me. I see that, man. You got a great. You got a great setup there. Great setup. But uh, yeah, speaking of hurt. Illinois, so let's let's talk a little bit about Illinois. I mean, you you just mentioned DraftKings, Bet Rivers. All sorts of, I think William Hills now operating there. Mm -hmm. Lots of them are operating. But let's talk a little, a little bit about this mobile it's not even a bill, this oh. mobile uh, thing that's going on. Because as of now, I think we're still set for like Saturday being a cutoff again, yeah. right? Or have they extended that? Well, they haven't extended it yet. There was a board meeting with the Illinois Gaming Board yesterday. Um, or no, I'm sorry, today actually, this yeah. morning. And I haven't read the notes on that yet. But I have a hard time believing that they're not going to be, they're not going to extend that. And really for the reason, you know, down in Southern Illinois, where you're pretty familiar with where mm -hmm. DraftKings uh, mm -hmm. casino queens are their COVID rate is like through the roof right now. Oh, so yeah. I don't know. It's, I mean, the whole thing is really kind of ridiculous when you think about it, just the sense of like, why would we have mobile apps and online sports betting, but then people can't register on a mobile app. Like it makes no, no sense. I mean, I was speaking with a, a casino in Ohio this past week. And even these guys were like, what are you guys doing in Illinois? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I mean, leave it to Illinois, though, to kind of not oh. make sense on what they're doing, you know. And for those of you listening that don't really know what we're talking about, I mean, the, when the law came out in Illinois that sports betting was legal, uh, part of that was you had to be physically at the casino to sign up and, and bet. And then you could go wager on your mobile apps and play. Well, with COVID and all of this, the uh, temporary ruling is people can sign up mobily, which in the affiliate space – really is a like two thumbs up for affiliates because now we can right. promote mobile side and, and that kind of thing. So uh, it's been like a back and forth thing, like on, off, on, off on this mobile side. Right. And so I don't know why Illinois doesn't just come out and say, you know what, this is working. Why would we change it for COVID and not COVID? Let's just leave it. If it's okay to do now, why isn't it okay to do in two months? I, I don't really get that. And hopefully the governor and whoever has to sign off right. on this will ultimately say, yeah, let's just leave it as is. Yeah. Hopefully we'll get some clarity on Saturday. And yeah. I mean, it's, 
but like you said, it's Illinois. So who knows what's going to happen here? It's just, it's, it's crazy. So let's talk about some other states. Uh, any other states that you see, maybe that aren't legal yet, that are are starting to kind of form or blossom, uh, or maybe that you're working with uh, currently? Yeah, I think Ohio is an interesting one. I think Ohio is ready to go. They just have an issue right there now. They can't decide who wants to regulate it, if it's going to be the lottery or the state. That's an interesting one. And uh, I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing Ohio open up. I think Michigan is going to be live. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'll tell you, Ryan, one of the crazy things that I I think if I, you know, think back to all these years is if I would have ever thought of all these states regulating, I would have seen online poker and all. I would, you know what I mean? I would have envisioned online poker because the argument has been there since we were like new in the industry. Oh, it's a skill game. It's legal. It's not gambling, but now it's all sports betting. And, I'll be honest, like, yeah, sports betting, some people do it as a skill. Like, I just, not me, man. I'm like, like I just <laughs> yeah. want to throw money at a game because I'm watching it. And, and you know, it's like, it, it's just it, crazy that there's no poker. And even to a lesser extent, online casino, you know, there's only a few states that have casino. So. Yeah, it's like, it's like sports betting kind of jumped those industries somehow here in the United States. And uh, I'm not real sure how, but yeah, you're right. You know, poker, there was talk, all, there's been talk for years. And then all of a sudden it's like, wait, now sports betting is legal. Poker's not, I, I can't keep it all straight. I do wish the United States would just, what's your thought on this? So the United States, you know, obviously going state by state makes it very difficult um, to keep up with the laws and understand who does what. Mm-hmm. Why? So why didn't we do this at a country level? And, and why is that so difficult uh, for our country to just kind of come together and say, yeah, it's right. legal now and let's just make it across the board? Um, why is that difficult? And will it ever happen that way? I don't know if it ever will. I mean, the problem is you've got states like Utah and places that are so against, you know, like gambling and everything else. So I, I, don't, I don't know if you'd be able to strong arm some mm. certain individual states uh, but I mean, what, what I would love to see happen is, yeah, some sort of a federal law, but states want to opt out, they can opt out. Yeah, yeah, that, that would be awesome. And that would make it so much easier, you know, because I know, and when I speak, a lot of times I speak from an affiliate mindset, you know, thinking because we work sure. with a lot of affiliates and things like that. But it's just such a, a tedious process to get your state by state licenses and to, oh. you know, just deal with all the different regulations and rules and then, you know, everything going on in all these states. And then just think about it from a website perspective, you know, putting up ads and things like that. It's like you're trying to talk to all these people and there's different messages for different states and different codes and different all of this that you have to somehow make sense of uh, on your site that the reader understands right it, it's a mess you bring up a really good point about all the different states and having to get you know like new jersey is a little bit different in how you have to you know get your uh, your permit your vendor's permit mm-hmm. illinois for example you don't have to do anything right now mm-hmm. but then i want to say indiana it's like 500 or a thousand bucks mm-hmm. that you have to pay so what it's really doing though is squeezing the smaller affiliates out of the game i mean mm-hmm. like you look back to the early 2000s and there were thousands of affiliates. And now it's really, there's a lot of big media corporations that control a thousand different websites. And of course, being the big companies like that, they can afford to have attorneys and afford to have, you know, people researching every state getting licensed. And if you're just new to the game and you want to be a a U.S. regulated affiliate, man, it's tough. I, I feel for people trying to do that. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So what about sports right now, uh, let alone betting? Uh, we got sports. We got lots of things going on. We got NBA playoffs going. We finally got football back. Um, oh. Hey, you enjoying any of this action? Uh, baseball is, I guess, kind of winding down here regular season-wise. Uh, are you into it? Are you, are you oh, still dude. able to, like, really enjoy it, even though it's all on oh. different schedules now? Yeah, yeah. For sure. Like, I watch Cubs game every night. My wife is finally just like, really, again? I'm like, yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I've been – I mean, I, I'm a huge Cubs fan, so I've watched that and obviously the Bears. So, you know, you cool. can't go wrong with the well, – wow. That comeback, that back. comeback week one, man, the Bears looked good in that comeback. They, they yeah, looked good they, for like half a quarter. I'm like, what in the world? Yeah, but you know what is is really disheartening is to watch Patrick Mahomes and realize he could have been on the Chicago Bears. Oh, you know? wow. Yeah, I totally forgot about like that. Yeah, wow. He's, he's pretty yeah. dang good. <laughs> yeah, it cool. is. It's, it's craziness, man. Well, good, man. Well, if anybody wanted to – so as you guys can see, listeners can see in here, Jeremy knows what he's talking about. Jeremy's been around this space for a long time, starting to get into consulting here with regulated uh, companies and things like that. If anybody wanted to talk to you, get a hold of you, chat with you informally or formally, how would they do that? 
Yeah, just shoot me an email, jeremy at empiremarketing.net. Awesome. awesome. I mean, yeah, I'm pretty, if you just Google my name, you'll find me somewhere on the internet. <laughs> okay, I don't know. <laughs> no more bad, no more bad. I but. mean, yeah, that's always a risky uh, proposition to say, go Google my name. You never know what's going to show up, uh, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, cool. Well, Jeremy, really appreciate you being here. Any last words, anything you want to chat, chat about before we get off here? No, I mean, this was cool. It was cool to catch up with you. And, uh, you know, I just think it's going to be super exciting here in the next couple of years as all these new states come online and to see how the, the overall industry really matures with uh, multiple states in the market. I know one thing I wanted to run by you before I get you off the line here. So where is the paid or premium pick space going? Because that's one of these spaces that has always been around and has always been treated as kind of like a tout area, right? right. You know, the, the touts out there. Now you're starting to see a lot of data backed um, services pop up where, you know, cause data is the big thing right now. And so trends and data all formulating these picks, where is this space going to go um, in the next five years here in the United States, especially? That's a really interesting topic you bring up. I'm, I'm actually consulting for a company right now that they do that and they, but they consider it sports investing and not necessarily just selling picks. Sure. And, and we're seeing a lot of that and it's, it is, it's data driven and everybody has different systems. But I will say one thing, like as I've done research in that space and I've been working in that space, it, I mean, there's like good characters and bad characters you know, I, so I think a lot of bad characters are going to have to get flushed out. And I, you know, I see in the future, it's all going to be more data driven and analytical versus just a guy saying, Hey, here, buy my picks for 20 bucks. But at the end of the day, I mean, it's all about marketing, right? I mean, it's still all about marketing because you can be the best handicapper in the world and be churning out pick after pick after pick, but you got to be able to convince the readers and the listeners and everybody that I'm better than these other, other thousand sites out there. Right. So it's still all just marketing at this point. And it's, yeah, uh, it, it totally it's tough is. to weed out the, the true marketing from the, you know, the touts from the, the false stuff. Yeah. And it's a very tough space. Uh, I was curious what your thoughts were just on that whole space. And yeah, I, I think at the end of the day, the results really speak for themselves. I mean, if you're, whether you're selling picks, you know, through data or however you're doing it, you have to show your results. I mean, if you want to have credibility in that space. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, cool. Well, that's uh, that's just one of the many areas of this whole legalization of sports betting that I know is starting to boom is that picks area. And uh, mm -hmm. man, there's a lot's going on. So Jeremy, I definitely appreciate you being here. It was great to catch up with you. Hopefully we can uh, get together. Maybe you can get down to Florida someday and we can, uh, we, if we can ever travel, right. Get down to Florida. Yeah, right. Exactly. And we can hang. Hey, how about uh, Tampa, Super Bowl weekend, you come down and we'll go hang out in, in Tampa. That, they're well, in Tampa this year for the Super Bowl. Yeah, come down to Tampa for the Bears Super Bowl game. That'll be Bear, there you go. Be Bears, <laughs> Bears and uh, I don't know who's going to be on the other side. <laughs> yeah, who knows, man? Yeah, it's going to be crazy. So Awesome, Jeremy. Thanks for being here. Cool. Uh, everyone, this was Jeremy Inky, a uh, longtime veteran, a friend of mine. Uh, like, again, like I said, I owe a lot to you that you don't even know, you know, that for me being in this industry. Oh, thank so thanks. I, I would consider you a, a pioneer in this space. So thanks, um, thanks for listening, everybody. Until next time, stay safe. And uh, we will talk soon. All right. Bye-bye, everybody.